All right, what's up guys, Mr. Fabella here, and we're continuing our lessons on probability and statistics. Um, today, we're gonna do some uh, several things. We're gonna find a sample space, find probability using that, using a compound event. We're gonna find probability of compound events as well. Uh, probability of multiple events, which is similar to that and a fundamental counting principle and what that is. Sounds like a lot of stuff, but they kind of just bleed into each other, so it's not too bad. All right, so let's get started here. Okay, so first of all, uh, find a sample space. So what does sample space mean? I'll put uh, the definition of sample space right here. So a sample space is a set of all possible outcomes in an experiment. So we're talking about like experimental probability, right? Or theoretical probability. So what are all the possible outcomes that, that could happen? Let's check out this. Um, Example here it says three students chosen to represent Mr. Baldrick's class in a school assembly are shown. All three of them need to sit in a row on the stage. Use a list to find the sample space for the different ways they can sit in the row. So one way to do this is to just put a list down and maybe uh, assign a letter for each person. So A C G. So they could do A C G, or Carlos could go first and then Adrian, right? Or it could be Greg first, and then Carlos, and then Adrian, et cetera. You just keep on going, right? So then you just keep going. Um, G, Greg, Adrian, then Carlos. It could be Adrian, Greg, and Carlos. And I see that Adrian is first twice. Greg is first twice. So now, so let's see, Carlos would be first, and then uh, Greg, and then Adrian. So nothing else. There's no other possibilities. So one, two, three, four, five, six. There are six different ways. Okay, so that's one way of uh, finding sample space. Okay. So it also says a car can be purchased in blue, silver, red, or purple. So let's see, blue, silver, red, or purple. It also comes as a convertible or a hard top. Use a table or a tree diagram to find a sample space, a sample. So let's look at these, right? It could be a convertible or a hard top. So each blue is a convertible or a hard top. Right? So actually I could just copy this. So kind of a little sloppy there, but as you can see, you can have blue convertible, blue hard top, silver convertible, silver hard top, red convertible, red hard top, and purple convertible, purple hard top. Right? You might not even have needed to do that all. Well, no, it's a defi yeah. So the sample space, this is the sample space. How many there are? Or is it gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight? So eight ways. But the sample space is actually this group right here. So those are all the different ways uh, you can configure a car. Pretty soon you're gonna kind of see what the fundamental accounting principle is going to be when you see this. Like, think, do you notice anything about this that there are blue, silver, red, or purple, and it comes in a convertible or hardtop? So are you noticing anything? All right, let's move on. Okay, so next we're gonna talk about simulation. So a simulation is a, it's a way of collecting probability data using actual objects like coins or spinners. So kind of hard to uh, explain. I'll write the definition up here, but let's, let's go with a um, example. So the one that's given here is first spin, second spin, third spin. Those are actual spinners. So you're gonna use those spinners to represent actual objects that you can't spin around. So here's an example. Every student who volunteers at the concession stand during basketball games will receive a free school t-shirt. The shirt comes in three different designs. Three different designs. Design a simulation that could be used to model this situation. Use your sim simulation to find how many times a student must volunteer in order to get all three shirts. So the example here would be to use a spinner divided into three sections to represent the different colors of the shirt. Assign each section one of the t-shirts. Spin the spinner until you land on each section. So all you need is a one spinner and then keep spinning, keep spinning, keep spinning, and then using that data, see how many times it'll take until it goes on red, yellow, or uh, blue. So that's one way of using a simulation because you're not gonna go pick at a shirt. You don't need different shirts to pick at. You can just use a spinner that represents uh, how you can randomly get a color. Okay, and then finally, the fundamental counting principle. It's uh, if there are a certain number of ways to do one thing and another certain number of ways to do another thing, then you multiply those two ways and that, that's how many ways there are to do both things. 
So kind of confusing. I'll kind of write a better definition somewhere else up here. But basically, you're multiplying the events together to get the total number of outcomes. So for example, here it's coin has heads or tails, so that's two. A number cube has one, two, three, four, five, or six. So those are six different possibilities. So if you want to find the possibility, how many different ways you, can, you will get if you flip a coin and roll a number cube, how many different variations are there? You multiply two for coin, because heads and tails, and six for the cube, and you get 12. There are 12 different ways, and you can actually make a table, but this is a shortcut. Yeah, if you made a table, it'd be like H1, H2, H3, H4, H5, H6, H6, then T1, T2, T3, T4, T5, T6, and you would get 12. There's no other uh, combinations. So <clears throat> let's go with an example here. It says, find the total number of outcomes from rolling a number cube with sides labeled one through six, so it's a die, and choosing a letter from the word numbers. So a letter from the word numbers. So this, there are one through six, so this is six, times how many letters are there in the word numbers? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So just six times seven, you have 42. Okay, there are 42 different ways you can put a number cube and a letter from the word numbers there. So this is way faster than making a table or a chart, right? But we're not done. It says, find the probability of rolling a six and choosing an M. Okay, don't get kind of fooled because there are different kinds of probability here. It says of rolling a six and choosing an M like at once. So a six and an M, there's no other way to do a six and an M, right? There's only one six on the number cube and one letter M in the word numbers. So there's only one six and M out of a 42 possible uh, rolls. So if you divide that, you would get, I'm gonna approximate it, 0 0.024. So that would be your probability of uh, rolling a six and choosing an M, which is roughly 2%. Okay, then finally, we're gonna talk about the probability of multiple events. And one of the most common ones you'll always see um, is the probability of rolling dice. Before, we've been calling it a number cube, one die, right? The probability of rolling a six on a number cube is one out of six, because there's one six out of six different sides. Here, the probability of multiple events. So if you think about the numbers you can get when rolling dice, you can get snake eyes, which is two, you get a three or four or five, six. you can get everything and uh, you can get a 12, all well, box cars. Two sixes is 12. So you get two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Those are the different numbers you can get. So um, if we're in class, we'd be playing a game with this called Pig or um, doing other games, but unfortunately we're not. So I want you to think, would you take this bet? If I were to say, okay, Listen, I will take the number seven. That's a nice number. If I roll a seven, I win. But I'll give you, I'll give you t three numbers. You can have a one, a two. No, sorry, not a one. You can't roll a one. You can have a two, a three, or a 12. If you roll a two, a three, or a 12, you win. Would you take that bet? Would that be a good bet? And a lot of times you say, oh, yeah, th I get three whole numbers to pick from. Mr. Bell only gets seven. Or I j only gets one. He only gets the number seven. So here, this is a way kind of to prove it would be, I would actually take that bet for myself because it will be more likely for me to roll a seven than it would be for you to roll a two, a three, or a 12. That doesn't mean I'm, not, I'm gonna win automatically, but the odds are in my favor. So let's see why that is. So we're gonna try and find the probability of rolling a sum of seven with two six-sided die. So here, let's think about the first event, because these are multiple events, right? Each, even though we're doing it at the same time, we're rolling dice at the same time, I'm rolling one die, and then I'm gonna roll a second die. So when you roll dice, you usually put them both in your hand and you roll it, right? But it doesn't matter, you can roll one and roll another, right? But those two multiple events together, you add them up and that's how you get your sum, like how many times are you gonna go around the board? What are the possible events for the first die? Well, you can get a one, two, three, four, five, or six, right? And it's nice because there's only two. The possibilities of a second die I could make a table and go one, two, three, four, five, or six. So if I make a grid here, if I get a one and a one, I get a two, right? So the sum of the dice, I put them together, I make a little grid. 
and then a 12, right? So here, let's go with my bet of rolling a seven first. It says, well, it's probably rolling a seven. So let's see how many sevens are there. Because right here, what you're looking at is the sample space right, of the sum. So the probability of sum of seven, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, six times I can roll a seven. Which is like, what? You can roll a six times? Yeah, because I can roll a six and a one or a one and a six because they're two different die. Or I could roll a two and a five or a five and a two or a three and a four and a four and a three. So there's six different ways I can get a seven. Okay? So six out of there are 36 possible outcomes when I roll two die. Okay? So in that case, I have a one in six chance of rolling a seven. One in six chance is pretty good. One in six chance is about 17%. Doesn't sound that high, but like I only picked one number, remember? You, before we said you can get 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And I gave you three numbers. So let's see what the probability of that is. Maybe you've already been looking at it. Okay, so let's look at I said I would give you 2, 3, or 12. So 2, 3. So there's only one way to get a 2, a 1 and a 1. Two ways to get a 3, a 2 and a 1 or a 1 and a 2, and only one way to get a 12. So what is that? That is, let's see, probability of sum of 2, 3, or 12. That's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 out of 36. Okay, so that's 1 out of 9. 1 out of 9, that's, that's roughly 11%. So that's significantly lower than 17%. Right? I, I, I could have given you, um, well, I couldn't give you anything else. If I gave you four numbers, if I gave you 2, 3, 11, and 12, then we would only be equal to that, right? So here, probably in multiple events, you would have to find out the entire sample space first to know how many, what you're going to uh, divide by. All right, so pretty interesting. And, you know, maybe this will make more sense when you play board games or whatever, when you're like, like Catan or something like, why is seven such a significant number when you're, whenever you're playing uh, a board game is because it's because it's the most common number that uh, you can roll. Why is 1 or 12 either really bad or really good on, on, or a 2 or 12 really bad or really good in some kind of game? It's because it's very uh, unlikely that that event will occur. Like, if I just want to roll a 2, let's say, like, you're playing a game and something really bad happens if you roll a 2. That is... So the probability of only rolling a 2 is about... 0.027 repeating. So that's just about, to about 3%. So that's very low compared to what the probability is to roll a seven. So hopefully that was helpful uh, with finding probability of multiple events, finding sample space, and using simulation to uh, help with probability. So I'll see you hopefully this was helpful and I'll see you guys next time.